What's up, Applied English? Coming at you live from the armchair on this uh, planned virtual day. One thing you'll notice this week is that we have the same objective all week. Students will be able to write well-structured paragraphs. Um, we've already done quite a bit with sentence writing. I've given you some feedback these past couple of weeks on graded assignments, uh, just to let you know how your sentences are looking, capitalization, and marks, those kinds of things. Now I figure it's time we uh, build up from there and start working on our paragraphing. As a reminder, today is a virtual day, so if you haven't taken a moment to pray yet, I encourage you to pause the video. Uh, the rest of this video is just all notes on the parts of a paragraph. All right, y'all, let's continue. So, um, as it says, you're watching through the paragraph writing notes video right now. Um, these are the same notes that we dealt out in class at the end of uh, last Thursday before parent-teacher conferences, so you should have a copy with you. Um, we will be using these notes as a reference all throughout the school week this week, so it's really helpful for you to have these completed, ready to go, for you to use as we do quite a bit of writing in class. One thing I'll also say is that after our notes are done, I don't have any other assignments for you today. Um, I would encourage you to double check your Schoology grade book just to see if you're missing any assignments. Um, I've, I've been working on grading slowly throughout this weekend, so take a look to see if you're missing anything that you can still turn in this week. All right, so in our lesson folder, the only other thing you'll see today is paragraph writing notes. I do want to point out that you have access to two documents here. There's the uh, digital copy of the notes packet itself right here. So if you forgot yours at home or if you never got one because you were missing on Thursday, you can click view to take a look at the packet itself. You can download it, print it, whatever's helpful for you there. Please know that I do have uh, paper copies, extra copies of this in the classroom. So if you need to catch up on them later, you absolutely can. But I would still encourage you to watch through our lesson video today so you know what's going on. You can also access the PowerPoint that I'll be using yourself. Clicking on its file will download it. Clicking view will allow you to read it in Schoology. I'm just going to open it up in PowerPoint itself. Oh, and by the way, this one is SpongeBob themed. Uh, I grew up with SpongeBob. It started when I was seven. That was season one, 1999. Uh, season two in 2000 when I was eight. So um, that's maybe one of the things that you and I have in common. Maybe you grew up watching reruns. Uh, I grew up watching it like when new episodes were coming out every single every single week on Nickelodeon. Title of this presentation is How to Organize a Paragraph. Uh, maybe writing for you is not the easiest thing in the world. Maybe you feel like SpongeBob writing his uh, essay in that classic episode where he's writing and writing and writing and all he gets is the. The hope here is that as we uh, review the parts of a paragraph, um, you feel confident in your own writing moving forward. The first thing that every good paragraph needs is a really simple step. Uh, step one is the topic sentence. So every good paragraph begins with a sentence that introduces or sets up its central point. In general, you want your topic sentences to be short and sweet. You want to be clear, get right to the point, goes a long way. You don't have to do anything super fancy to start a paragraph. Throughout the way, I'll be giving you uh, multiple examples for different types of writing here. So notice that these topic sentences are not incredibly long or fancy. Uh, for an expository or a narrative paragraph, something maybe focused on our own lives, I wrote, SpongeBob SquarePants was the funniest and most memorable show of my childhood. Again, just setting up that paragraph, I'll explain why with the rest of my paragraph. What about persuasive? Let's say I'm trying to convince my readers of something. Today's children should not watch SpongeBob SquarePants because of its absurd disregard for physics. I don't actually agree with that statement, but let's say I'm trying to convince parents not to let their kids watch SpongeBob. I might make that argument. Literary analysis, we'll be doing more of this this week. This is just explaining the meaning of a, of a show or a story or a movie, whatever it might be. I'll be asking you to do this later this week with, um, with one of our short stories. One of the themes of SpongeBob SquarePants is that friendship brings joy. So notice there I'm just focused on one theme. That's what my paragraph's going to be devoted on. Just to discussing how uh, the friendships in SpongeBob demonstrate joy. Before you go into step two, I should uh, mention as well, feel free to pause this video at any point if it's going too fast for you to take notes. You can certainly pause and rewind uh, as much as you need in order to get your notes done. Second step, after your topic sentence, it's about providing evidence. 
I like the word evidence because it includes quite a bit of different ideas depending on what type of writing you're, uh, you're writing at the time. Uh, but here's the idea. Since writing is about proving our ideas, every good paragraph has to include some evidence that supports the topic sentence. So if I said, for instance, that, uh, that SpongeBob was the most memorable show of my childhood, I need to back that up. I need to prove that uh, with some ideas, right? Why was it such a memorable show? A little pro tip here, the length of your paragraph is determined by how much evidence you give. So let's say I assign you a paragraph and I say, hey, it has to be about six sentences long, right? You might be able to get away with one or two pieces of evidence there. But let's say you have a paragraph in Old Testament that uh, where your teacher wants it to be at least eight sentences long or at least nine sentences long. Provide another piece of evidence that's going to bring commentary with it and lengthen out your paragraph. Uh, if, again, if you need length, provide more proof. That is the best way uh, to build more length and more detail into a single paragraph. And once again, evidence is always closely accompanied by what we call commentary. We'll cover that in step three. Here's an example. So going back to my uh, narrative paragraph, focused on my own life, I need to explain why SpongeBob was so funny and so memorable. I'm going to use a specific example. I particularly remember watching the famous Time Machine episode on New Year's Eve as the year 2000 began. Notice here, um, remember I mentioned that SpongeBob is memorable. I've got the verb remember right there. I haven't quite gotten into the funniness yet. Maybe I'll save that for commentary. What about for persuasion? Uh, another example, for instance, there's a great transition there for introducing evidence. The famous Campfire Song song features a well-lit campfire burning at the bottom of the ocean. Notice here, this is just evidence. I don't have to explain it just yet. All I'm doing is setting up the example that I want to use as I prove my point, that SpongeBob uh, ignores the laws of physics. What about literary analysis? An excellent example, there's the word example once again, of a strong friendship is the one between SpongeBob and Patrick Starr. Notice here, I'm just focused on one friendship. Uh, let's say this paragraph has to be very long. I could always build in another friendship later on, maybe two more friendships later on. But for now, I'm just going to focus on SpongeBob and Patrick, which is the best friendship in the entire series. So commentary. We mentioned this word a couple times already. This immediately follows up uh, our evidence. Commentary. Notice the word comment inside of it. It's where your own personal writing voice comes into play the most. After each piece of evidence you provide, you want to explain its meaning or relevance in about two to four sentences. In general, I found one commentary sentence to be uh, usually too little explanation. In my own writing and in most student writing that I've ever read, anything over four tends to be overkill. It is possible to go over four sentences, uh, but in general, you want to try to explain yourself in two to four sentences for each piece of evidence. Something to remember, your commentary should clearly reflect the idea from your topic sentence. Um, it's really easy in commentary to get off task or off topic or off focus. Uh, you want to make sure your commentary is doubling back to that topic sentence. Once again, if you need more length in your paragraph, just rinse and repeat more evidence, more commentary, more evidence, more commentary until you're ready to close out your paragraph. Examples. Once again, I have to explain myself here, right? As strange as the episode was, this is the Time Machine episode, it connected well with the incoming millennium. I also still laugh, there's that funniness that I mentioned in my topic sentence, whenever I think of Squidward tentacles curling up and yelling, future. Again, notice I'm focused on my own life there. With my commentary here, I did bring it back to my topic sentence idea because I noticed that I still need to I needed to mention uh, how funny SpongeBob is. Persuasion. Uh, it may seem obvious that fire cannot exist underwater, but our children may begin to think otherwise. So notice here I have to explain why the campfire song song is a problem, going back to my topic sentence. Another, another reason why, plus, the song itself is quite annoying. Again, I'm trying to persuade right there, trying to convince uh, parents not to let their kids watch Spongebob, even though I turned out fine. Literary analysis. This one's especially well written. SpongeBob and Patrick embody the nautical nonsense described in the theme song. Between bubble blowing, jellyfishing, and even a trip to Glove World, 
these two ideas bring these two characters bring joy into each other's lives again notice here i'm just analyzing i'm explaining how uh the friendship between spongebob and patrick brings out its theme of joy it all doubles right back to that topic sentence once you're ready to close out your paragraph there is one more step it's called a summary sentence um, every good paragraph closes with a sentence, usually short and sweet, like your topic sentence, that conveniently summarizes the main point of the paragraph. You might feel a little bit repetitive in a summary sentence, but that's okay. A sentence may or may not uh, be quite similar to your topic sentence. Sometimes it's easiest just to kind of rephrase your topic sentence there. Uh, it may or may not begin with a concluding transition. Something like in conclusion or in sum or overall, those kinds of transition words. Sometimes they're going to feel right, sometimes they won't. It, that's a matter of preference and taste as you try that out in your own writing. For my own paragraph, I'm glad to say that I will always have fond memories of watching Spongebob. Notice that that sentence doesn't add anything new to the paragraph. It just closes it out in a creative and memorable way. All in all, th there's a concluding transition there. Exposing our kids to Spongebob will only cause them to decline in their understanding of science. That is a fancy way to say that watching Spongebob makes your kids dumber. Um, but notice there, uh, concluding transition helped to set up that sentence. It's a good way to close out that persuasive paragraph. Literary analysis. The joy expressed in these key friendships is one of the main themes of Spongebob. For that one, all I did is I took that same topic sentence and wrote it backwards. One of the main themes of Spongebob is that friendships brings joy. That joy in these friendships is one of the main themes of Spongebob. Same exact sentence, just flipped, inverted, uh, backwards. You have these in your notes, so I don't think I'm going to read all of them for the sake of time. But I want you to see what happens when you put these, uh, all these paragraphs together. So far, we've seen them in their parts. When you put those parts together as a whole, you'll see how well they flow and how effective these paragraphs are. I think for the sake of this video, I am just going to do, I like the literary analysis one, I'm going to do this one. One of the themes of Spongebob Squarepants is that friendship brings joy. An excellent example of a strong friendship is the one between Spongebob and Patrick Starr. Spongebob and Patrick embody the nautical nonsense described in the theme song. Between bubble blowing, jellyfishing, and even a trip to Glove World, these two characters bring joy into each other's lives. The joy expressed in these key friendships is one of the main themes of Spongebob. Great paragraph in general. The only thing that might be lacking a little bit is more examples. Right now it's like a five sentence paragraph, I think. Yeah, uh, if we wanted it to be something more like an eight sentence paragraph, all we would have to do is include another friendship right here, right? Um, we've mentioned Spongebob and Patrick. Let's say I need to extend this by three sentences. I might talk about Spongebob and Sandy next or Spongebob and Mr. Krabs, or Spongebob and Squidward. Just another set of characters right there. Add the evidence, add the commentary. It's going to add probably another three sentences to this paragraph, and add more detail and stretch it out even further. That's all I got for you guys today. Just a friendly reminder, we will be practicing our paragraphing in class, so you can use them as a guide. Uh, otherwise, the only other thing I would recommend you do today is check your Schoology grade book for missing work. Uh, this week could be a fantastic time to get missing work turned in as well. Until then, peace.